Welcome to my message today called Finding Home with Heaven. Uh, my name is Steve Reynolds. It's my privilege to be the lead pastor of Capital Baptist Church, and I thank you for joining uh, with me today. This message is part of a series I'm doing called Welcome Home home. Uh, welcome home. And so far in this series, we've talked about finding home with Jesus, finding home with relationships, uh, finding home uh, when it comes to church. And now today we're going to talk about finding home with heaven. And I must confess to you, this is my favorite topic uh, in this series, to be able to share with you today about heaven. And heaven is our permanent home. And you know, there's a lot about heaven we don't know about, but there's a lot about heaven we do know about. And a lot of times we just kind of think, well, you know, can't really talk much about heaven. We don't, we don't know a lot about that. But the reality is heaven is mentioned almost 600 times uh, in uh, the Bible. And so the bottom line is it's not an issue of a lack of information. It's a lack of investigation. Uh, the reality is we have a lot of information about heaven. The issue is many times we don't take time uh, to investigate that. And so today I'm excited to be able to share with you from Revelation chapter 21. And Revelation chapter 21 uh, gives us a six-fold description of heaven. A six-fold uh, description uh, of heaven. And I want to begin by just reading the first verse, uh, I call it the key verse, uh, and that is uh, Revelation chapter 21, uh, verse number 10. I want to read this as our first uh, verse today. We're going to look at a lot of verses today, but I want to read Revelation 21, uh, 10 as our first verse uh, today. I call it the key verse. Here the Bible says, And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me the great city showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Now this is the book of Revelation. This is the last book uh, of the Bible. And here we find the apostle uh, John uh, is given a vision of heaven. A, a, a vision of what heaven uh, is like. And so I'm excited today as he talks here today about this great uh, city and how that, that God shows them uh, a glimpse of heaven. And John in this chapter communicates to us uh, six uh, different things about heaven, a six-fold uh, description uh, about heaven. Heaven. Now, as we begin, let's realize that all of us were made to live somewhere forever. Every one of us are going to be made to live, are made to live somewhere uh, forever. You know, when you die on this earth, uh, you enter uh, the afterlife. And the Bible is very, very clear. And that is those that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord, uh, their afterlife will be heaven. Those that reject Jesus Christ, they never accept uh, the, the price that Jesus paid uh, for their sin, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Their afterlife is going to be a terrible place uh, called hell. And so today what I want to do is I want to help you find home in heaven. I want to, I want to help you make sure that in the afterlife, uh, you spend eternity uh, in heaven. So please listen very closely as I talk about uh, finding home uh, with heaven. Now, first of all, as John uh, talks about heaven, he first tells us uh, that heaven, listen, is an eternal home. Heaven is an eternal home. The Bible says in Revelation 21, 1, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven, and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. You see, the bottom line is uh, this life and this world we live in right now is temporary. Uh, this is not uh, our eternal home. Uh, it's a temporary home uh, in which we uh, exist. Heaven is our eternal home. Heaven is our eternal home. And you know, when you think about people uh, dying, 
You know, many times when we put together like a program for, for someone who's passed away, uh, we'll literally have on the front of it the homegoing uh, service for, you know, whoever their name is. I mean, why do we say that the homegoing service? Because here's the bottom line. Uh, dying is not leaving home. Dying is going home for the Christian. Let me say that again. Dying is not leaving home, but rather it's going home. When you die as a Christian, you're not leaving home. This, this earth, this world is not our home. Uh, the Bible says in John 17, Jesus said in verse 16, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. John 17 is the, the longest continuous prayer that Jesus uh, prayed that's recorded in the Bible. It's, it really is the Lord's prayer. And in that prayer, speaking of believers in Jesus, he says, they are not of the world. We are not of this world, just as Jesus was not of the world. Uh, this world is not our home. The value system that we have is not the value system of this world. The beliefs that we have as Christians are not the beliefs uh, of this world. Uh, again, Jesus said it very clear. They are not of the world. We are not of this world. In fact, the Bible says in Philippians 3.20, our citizenship is in heaven. Let me read this, uh, Philippians 3.20. For our citizenship, listen to this, is in heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven, which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our citizenship is heaven heaven. That, that, that's our home. You know, and I love it uh, the way Paul says, we eagerly wait for that. And one day we will be there uh, for all of eternity. So right now the Bible says in 1 Peter 2.11 that, that as we go through this life, we are sojourners and pilgrims. That means we're just kind of passing through uh, this world. Uh, 1 Peter 2.11, Beloved, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. So as we go through this life and we're trying to live a holy life, trying to live a, a godly life, I mean, it's going to be hard because there's going to be temptation. And, and that's what Peter is saying here, that we're going to deal with, with fleshly lusts which war against the soul. And he tells us to abstain from sin, to live victoriously, to live a holy life, knowing that we're sojourners, knowing that we're pilgrims. Again, this is temporary. I, I'm, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but I know it's not going to be forever. There's a, there's, a, there's a period of time Steve Reynolds is going to be on this earth. And listen, I'm just a pilgrim passing through on my way to my eternal home. And so is that true of you if you're a Christian. And then lastly in this section, Hebrews eleven sixteen, it says, but now they desire a better that is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Praise God. He's talking about it's, it's a better, it's better. It's a heavenly country. It's a city that's been prepared by Almighty God. And I just want to focus on that word better. You know, it's better. You know, when you go home to your eternal home, as we're going to see today, uh, it's a whole lot uh, better place because it is a heavenly country. It's a heavenly country. So number one, listen, make it clear in your mind, heaven is an eternal home. This world will be destroyed. This world is only temporary. God has prepared for us an eternal home in heaven. Secondly, heaven, it's a real home. It's, it's a real home. You see, it's important because so many people think, you know, that heaven is just kind of, you know, you know, kind of a floating on a cloud, you know, playing a harp or something or whatever. No, my friend, heaven is a literal, literal place. The Bible says in Revelation 21, 2, then I, John, saw the holy city. It's a holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
You see, one of the things we're going to see in Revelation 21 is he, he, he keeps calling it a city. It, it, it's, a, it's a literal place. I mean, as I'm recording this right now, I'm in a city. It's called Annandale, Virginia. Annandale, Virginia. That's where our church uh, is located, uh, in, in this city. And, and, and listen, it's a literal place. I'm in a literal place. Heaven is a literal place. It's a, you know, it's a, you, you're going to go to a place. In fact, I love the way uh, Jesus put it in John 14. This is, wow, this is such a special passage, John 14. And uh, in John 13, Jesus told his disciples that he was going to be leaving them, that he was going to be dying, he was going to be crucified. He gave them the insight into what was going to happen, and they became disturbed, they became upset about it. And, and Jesus told them this, my, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus tells them, listen, yes, that's true. I'm going to be leaving you, but listen, Hey, I'm going to go prepare a place for you. And I love it. Twice he says, it's a place. It's a place. And, and he says, you know, where I am, where I am, I'm going to be in a place. Uh, there you may be uh, also. Heaven is a real home. In fact, uh, what I think is a good uh, biblical definition of heaven, let me give you, a, uh, you know, the Steve Reynolds uh, version of, uh, of a definition of heaven. And here it is. Heaven is a perfect home where all believers will live with God forever. Let me read that to you again. Heaven is a perfect home where all believers will live with God forever. Heaven is a real, real home. In fact, Isaiah 65, 17 says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. Listen, heaven, find home in heaven because heaven is a real home. And then thirdly, heaven is a relational home. Please get this. This is so exciting. It's a, it's a relational home home. Revelation 21 3 says, and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them and they shall be his people. Now listen to this. Don't miss this. God himself shall be with them and be their God. Let me read it again. God himself will be with them and be their God. Listen, it's true. God is everywhere. Okay. That's absolutely true. But heaven, when you think about it, uh, heaven's kind of like uh, central headquarters, if you will. Uh, God is everywhere, but heaven is central command, uh, the central command post uh, for God. Uh, God is the centerpiece of the heaven and the glory of heaven. He, he's like the, the centerpiece. And, you know, that's why we say in Matthew 6, 9, Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father, which art in what? Heaven. Our Father, which art uh, in heaven. When we get to heaven, the most awesome thing, the most number one relationship is going to be our relationship with God. That we're going to be uh, with God. Uh, let me read it again. God himself shall be with them and be their God. God will be our God. First John 3, uh, 2 says, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not been yet revealed what we shall be. But we know, this is, we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. And notice this, for we shall see him as he is. We're going to see him as he is. But also, not only is the relationship with God, Heaven's a relational home when it comes to a relationship with God, but also with, with other people, you know, other people. That, and, you know, when we get to heaven, you know, we're, we're going to have relationships uh, with people. In fact, the Bible points this out in Matthew chapter 8, verse 11, uh, where it talks about when we get to heaven, we're going to, you know, have time, fellowship time with even people that are in the Bible, Bible characters. Listen to what Matthew 8, 11 says. And I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and sit down. Listen, we're going to sit down with Abraham. We're going to sit down with Isaac. We're going to sit down with Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Wow. How about the people in your life that you 
love so much that, listen, that have gone home. <laughs> you know, again, they didn't leave home. They went home. And, and, and they're in heaven. And I'm telling you, you know, the longer I'm li- I live, I'm, I'm 62 now, and I'm telling you, more and more are up there, you know, in heaven. Uh, and, and, you know, heaven gets sweeter all the time, you know, uh, as people that I love and care about, you know, uh, go home, you know, go home. And one day I'm going to be able to fellowship with them again. And the great thing about relationships on this earth, you know, people on this earth that you cherish so much, like your family and friends and things like that, you know, we, listen, when we die, we're going to be together, you know, and, and we're, and we're going to fellowship with each other. We're going to have relationship uh, with each other. Heaven is a relational place. And, you know, God is about community. We learned this last week. We talked about, you know, finding home with the church and how the church is a place of, of community. And heaven is going to be a place of, of community. And it's going to be a relational home. And then thirdly, heaven is a relief home. Whew. It's going to be a relief home. What, what do I mean by that? Well, number one, relief from suffering. Don't miss this. Listen to this. Relief from suffering. Revelation 21.4 says, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things are passed away. Praise God. Praise God. The former things are passed away. You know, right now we live under the curse of sin. You know, the Bible tells us that when, when uh, you know, sin entered the world, uh, you know, God cursed the creation. And, and because of that, we live, you know, with bodies that are, that are filled with, you know, pain and, and, and things like that. And the Bible says when we get to heaven, listen to this, God's going to wipe away every tear from our eyes. There's not going to be any more death. There's not going to be any more sorrow. There's not going to be any more crying. There's not going to be any more pain. I love this. The former things are passed away. Listen, some of you right now, you're in tremendous pain. You, you got a lot of pain. It might be physical pain, it might be mental pain, it might be emotional pain. There's going to be pain in this life. But let me tell you something. There is a relief home. <laughs> it's called heaven. And the former things, they're going to pass away. And the things that you're experiencing with pain right now, listen, they're temporary. They're earthly. They're not heavenly. And when we get to heaven, all that you're dealing with today Listen, this is our hope is going to be passed away. And then Romans 8.18 says, For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Praise God. We have sufferings in this present time, but they're not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. There'll be relief from suffering. That's going to be awesome. But listen, there's going to be relief from sin. This is going to be relief from sin. You know, I talked about as, as believers in Jesus Christ, this world is not our home. And the values of this world don't reflect our values. And, and, and the lifestyle and the actions of this world don't reflect our lifestyle and our actions. And, you know, we sin. Yes, Steve Reynolds sins and you sin. But you know what? I don't want to sin. I don't want to sin. I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, I want to live godly. I want to live holy. I'm doing my best with God's help uh, to do that. Yes, sometimes I fail. Yes, sometimes I sin. No doubt about it, okay? No doubt about it. But you know what? One day when I get to heaven, you know, I'm not going to have to have this struggle with my flesh and, and this world. The Bible says there's going to be a relief from sin. Revelation 21.8 says, But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Heaven, when we get to heaven, we're not going to have to deal with sin. We're not going to have to deal with our sin. We're not going to have to deal with anybody's sin, all right? (laughs) Anybody's sin. There's going to be relief from sin. In fact, I love the way Hebrews 4, 9 says, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. There's there's a rest for the people of God. Listen, keep fighting the fight, okay? 
Do your best to live godly. Do your best to live holy. If you fall down, get back up. If you sin, confess it to God. Get right with God. If there's sin in your life right now that you need to confess to God, do it right now. But there's coming a time when there's a rest for the people of God. And we won't have to worry about that any longer. And then listen to this, number five. Look at, we're looking at John's description of heaven, a six-fold description of heaven. Number five, heaven is a remarkable home. Remarkable. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what a place. Revelation uh, 21.10, that was our key verse we started with today. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. He showed me, and the description that's given, the adjective is, it's a great city. It's a great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. It's called great. It's called holy. And don't miss it. It will be like a city. It will, again, heaven is a physical place. It will, it will be like a city. But listen, it's going to be very different than the cities we know today. Hebrews 11.10 says, He waited for the city which has foundations. And listen to this description. Whose builder and maker is God. Whose builder and maker is God. This city, the builder of this city is God. The maker of this city is God. Now I wish I had more time in this section, all right? Because there's so much detail here, all right? But let me just kind of quickly go through and talk about things that make this so remarkable. Number one, there will be remarkable surroundings. Remarkable surroundings. In verses 12 through 14, Paul talks about there's going to be these gates. There's going to be 12 gates. They're going to be pearly gates, all right? Uh, and then there's going to be this uh, tremendous wall. And uh, let me just read this to you. It says, also, uh, she had a great high wall with 12 gates. So there's 12 gates. And at every one of those gates, there's going to be a, uh, an angel uh, that's going to be there. And, and listen, on each gate, there's going to be uh, a name. And that's the 12 tribes uh, of the children of Israel. And there's going to be three gates to the east, three to the north, three to the south, three to the west. And listen to verse 14. Now, the wall of the city is going to have 12 foundations. And on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Listen, praise God. Man, it's going to be unbelievable. These beautiful, strong gates guarded by, by angels and, 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 and having the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And there's going to be, you know, this wall It's going to have uh, uh, 12 foundations there. And on every part of that, there's going to be the names of the 12 apostles. Wow. It's remarkable. It's going to be remarkable in space. In verses 15 through 17, John describes the size of heaven. It's going to be massive. And it's going to easily hold every, you know, every believer of all time, every nation, every tongue. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a huge, huge place. Uh, it's going to be uh, remarkable stones. And it talks about all these different stones. And, and uh, you know, I can't even pronounce all the names of them, okay? But there's going to be blues and greens and, and browns and reds and yellows and, and uh, you know, uh, purples. And, I mean, if you, if you look at these different stones, and, you know, i got a description of them right here, the different colors, it's just going to be gorgeous. It's going to be gorgeous. Uh, it, it's going to be remarkable streets. Uh, verse tw uh, 21b says, pure gold like transparent glass. S literally streets of gold. Streets of gold. And listen, there's going to be remarkable, uh, remarkable shine. Uh, verse 23 says, uh, the city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. We're not going to have to worry about, you know, you know, having a sun, having a moon or whatever. Get, listen, the glory of God, the glory of God is going to shine and provide all the light we need. Heaven is a remarkable home. It's a remarkable home. And then lastly, and this is the most important part of the message today, because we're talking about how to find home. How can you find home in heaven? You've got to know heaven is a restricted home. Not everybody's going to heaven. Do you understand that? I, I told you that, listen, each of us are going to die. And there is going to be an afterlife. 
And those that, listen, those that reject Jesus as their Savior and Lord, their afterlife is going to be a horrible place called hell. A horrible place called heaven. Hell. Heaven, on the other hand, it's going to be restricted. Meaning, listen, it's for those that believe in Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Revelation 21, 27 says, But there shall be by no means enter into it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or lie, but only those, listen, only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. There's a book. There's a book. And it's called the book of life, the Lamb's book of life. And you know whose name is in there? My name's in there. Steve Brendel's name is in there. I know it's in there, okay? And you know why? Because I've asked Jesus to be my Savior, my Lord. You know, I, I listen, I'm, I'm not wanting to die. You know, I, I, I want to be as long as I can for, for my family and my, my church family and everyone else. But listen, I'm not afraid to die. I know my name is in this book because the Bible says in John 3, 36, he who believes in the son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe in the son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. See, again, there's. Two, two different types of people. It says those that believe in the Son, they have everlasting life. Now notice it's a present possession. A present possession. When I accepted Jesus as my Savior, August 16, 1968, listen to me, from that point on, I have everlasting life. I have it. I have the assurance of heaven. I know when I die, I'm going to heaven. And the Bible goes on to say, Those that do not believe the Son shall not see life, but rather the wrath of God abides on that person. Wouldn't you like to find heaven? Listen, I I pray that no one hearing this message today would die and go to hell. Heaven is a restricted place. But it's for everyone who is willing to ask Jesus Christ to be their Savior and their Lord. And I want to close today with this verse. Listen carefully. John 5, 24. Most assuredly. Now listen, we're talking about confidence here. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but is passed from death unto life. The key word there is the word believe. The word believe means to put your trust in, to put your trust in. Would you like to find a home in heaven? Would you like to do that? Let me tell you what you need to do. First of all, you need to realize that just like Pastor Steve Reynolds, that you're a sinner. And because of our sin, we deserve hell. We we deserve to go to hell. But here's the good news. God doesn't want any of us in hell. And Jesus Christ came from heaven. And listen, he came to this earth. He lived a perfect life. He never sinned one time. And when he died, listen to me, when he died, he died as a sacrifice for our sin. He, he died for you. He died for me. He, the Bible says he bore our sin in his body. And he was nailed to a cross. Listen, he bore our sin. He took our sin. He was buried. And listen to this great news. On the third day, he rose out of that grave victorious over sin and death. And if you will believe, that means put your trust in Jesus, he will save you and you can find a home in heaven. Would you like to do that today? The Bible says to be saved, you got to call on the Lord. That means you got to ask him to save you. And I want us to bow our heads. I want us to close our eyes right now. And if you have never asked Jesus to save you, I want to encourage you to do that right now. If you're already saved, why don't you thank God today for your salvation and realize, wow, heaven is going to be such an amazing, amazing home. And just thank God today for your salvation. But if you've never been saved, pray right now with me. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. 
every head bowed, every eye closed. And if you'd like to be saved today, just pray something like this from your heart to God's heart. Just say something like this. Dear God, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that Jesus rose from the grave to give me eternal life. Right now, I turn from my sin and I put my trust in Jesus to save me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me right now. Praise God. If you prayed that prayer, I'm telling you, he answered it. And then you know what I'm going to do as I close today? I'm going to pray a prayer of thanksgiving because I know I'm going to heaven. And I want to thank God for my salvation. Will you join me in that prayer if that's you as well? Father, I thank you for heaven. Lord, uh, God, it's not a lack of information. It's a lack of investigation. Lord, there's so much in, about heaven. And thank you that we've spent this time today just learning uh, some about heaven, Lord. And God, just thank you that uh, it is a far better place, that heavenly home. And God, thank you, Lord, uh, for that home. And God, until that time, just help us to live uh, godly. Help us to live holy. And God, as we go through this life, help us to abstain uh, from the lust of our flesh. And God, just thank you for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.